Hi everyone, welcome to Cloud and Loud Tech event. Uh, in this section, we will deep Kubernetes uh, before starting the session of our community. Uh, this community asked over one decade. Uh, Mr. Vijay Balan is founder of this community, this community around the world. Uh, main motto of this community is helping and save the cancer children, also upskilling and upscaling our team members. I will show you our LinkedIn page. Uh, uh, this is our LinkedIn page. Uh, you can also follow us. Uh, you will get uh, more updates and all. Also, you can. Uh, feel free to visit uh, uh, these three links. Uh, this is our LinkedIn page. This is the YouTube channel. Uh, this is our website. Uh, you can also follow us. Okay, in this section, we are going to discussing about uh, what is Kubernetes, how to set up, how to set up the Kubernetes in on premises, uh, then port creation. Uh, replica set creation deployment creation these are the main topic which we'll be covering today uh, my name is shaju krishnan having nine years of experience in it skilled in data center technology linux unix virtualization cloud and devops okay then what is kubernetes Basically, you know, right? Uh, Kubernetes, uh, uh, Kubernetes is an open source container orchestration tool. You can automatically deploy the container. You can scaling the container. You can managing the container. Basically, this is called uh, orchestration. Uh, there are various other orchestration tools available in the market, uh, like a Docker Swarm, uh, um, Apache MSOS, etc. Actually, basically, Google is designed this project, but now Cloud Native Foundation is managing this product. Uh, for better understanding the Kubernetes, I will explain on use, use cases. I will share my whiteboard. Uh, let's say I have one shopping application. It is xyz.onlineshopping.com. It is running in the microservices. I will share my whiteboard. let's say uh, this is our container okay this is our container uh, on top of that we deployed three ports and we create a own service group mm -hmm. We exposed uh, port number 80 and uh, 443. Okay, if the end user is trying to access this web page, it is coming to here and they can access the web page. Okay, it's uh, x, y, z dot online shopping dot com something like something like that we can put okay uh port is working there is no issue with the ports and all in some case this one of the port is getting going to crash or something in some case let's say this point on this port is going to crash what uh, what we'll do is uh, this load is sharing to this particular three, two nodes okay, for avoiding this one this uh for avoiding this one we need to continuously monitoring this board and we need to uh, we need to man manually log in that board and we need to try to restart the services and try to fix the issue 
if it is not possible we need to delete that port we need to recreate that port right again that is time consuming in that time if uh, this port can't handle the loads again the again uh, all service is going to down it is affecting the business for avoiding this uh, issue what we can do is we can implement kubernetes Okay, what Kubernetes will do is Kubernetes will continuously monitoring these ports. This all the ports. If any one of the port is going to crash or any any of the port is uh, service is going to down or down, what Kubernetes will do is Kubernetes itself will try to refix the issue. Okay, first they will try to refix the issue, and then they will try to restart the services. If uh, if it is not uh, it is if it is not working then what kubernetes will do is kubernetes will delete this particular port they will deploy new port this is basically orchestration okay uh, in case okay now would say 100 user is accessing this page uh, some peak time it is increased to 200 um, i hope these three three port can't handle the load right in that case we can upskilling also we can uh, not upskilling it we can scale up the uh, we can scaling up the container container also possible we can scaling the container this also possible if after the peak time it's here again 100 user is accessing means we can uh, remove that particular port this also possible so basically this is uh, orchestration i hope uh, everyone, everyone can understand this okay uh, next one is uh, kubernetes architecture actually this is architecture diagram if you look into this picture you can see two ports first one is the master node second one is the worker node actually there are two type of node in each cluster first one is the master node second one is the worker node as you know master node is controlling all the worker nodes and ports if you look into the master node it is having four main components first one is api server second one is etcd then controller is there scheduler also there yeah, we can look into one by one First one is API server. Basically, API server communicated with communicate with all other components within the cluster. It is act as front end uh, front end for the Kubernetes. The second one is etc. Basically, it is a database. It is used to store all the data used to manage the cluster. Uh, then scheduler. Uh, scheduler is responsible for distributing work or container across the multiple nodes. Let's say if you if you create one port, scheduler will allocate that port to worker node. And then control manager. Control manager is brain behind the orchestration. They are responsible for noticing and responding when nodes container or endpoint is goes down. Uh, the control make a decision to bring up the new container. This is the duty of control manager. Uh, then we can look into the worker node first one is the kubectl it is interacting with the master node and uh, share the health information of the worker nodes this is the duty of uh, kubectl then kube proxy uh, kube proxy is ensuring network traffic is routed properly to internal and external services as based on the rule defined in the network policy actually end, end user is uh, uh, end user end user is accessing through end user is accessing through, through a uh, queue proxy only uh, then if you check in then uh, then ports are there then sdn also there sdn is basically software dependent networking i think now you confused right uh, why sdn in the kubernetes i will sh share i'll share my whiteboard and i will tell you why sdn is important in the kubernetes
Okay, I will share my whiteboard. Okay, let's say we have two ports, uh, not two ports, two server, two worker nodes. Uh, this is interconnected to some switch or something. This is connected to this switch. This is connected to this switch. Uh, these two server having IP address, it's called 192.168.100.10. Server, we can say 192.168.100.10. Uh, here we installed Kubernetes. Once you install, once you install the Docker, Docker will create a virtual NIC. It is taking on virtual IP address. Let's say this is ten dot ten dot ten dot n. Another server also. If you installing the Docker, it is also taking the same IP address. So also for ten dot ten dot ten dot in this worker node we are I am I'm going to assign some ports. Okay, uh, and the second here also I'm going to assign one port. Okay, it's uh, this port is automatically taking the IP address, this is taking the virtual IP address. Uh, this port is taking dot ten dot ten dot eleven. It's also this port also taking the same IP address. Okay, in case uh, this port this worker node is going to crash or something, this port we need to move move to this worker node, right? If you move to this worker node, it again the network conflict will happen. The same IP address is already here. For avoiding this kind of things, we need to implement STN. Okay, once you implement the STN, networking part will handle STN. Uh, STN will allocate the IP address to this particular uh, node. STN will allocate IP address to this particular node then we can avoid the conflicts we can avoid the network conflicts i hope everyone is clear this uh, stn part yeah actually this is the basic uh, architecture uh, next we can jump into the installation part uh, how to install the uh, kubernetes in on-prem i will share my jit link Yeah, actually, this is our JIT link. Uh, you can also visit this cloud and loud uh, JIT dot uh, cloud and JIT dot com. Then go, we can go to you can go to cloud and loud. Uh, then you can go to deep dive. If you go into uh, Kubernetes deep dive, you can you can also uh, see this page. Okay, first one is uh, Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes administration deep dive. Before starting this exercise, you must uh, you must run minimum two Ubuntu Linux. Uh, create a uh, Linux, uh, create Linux machine in Azure AWS in your local lab, your local laptop using VMware or or Oracle virtual machine or Hyper-V. That is up to you. Make sure you open SSH and HTTP 8080 port uh, for the testing purpose. Uh, these are the topics. Actually, 
a Kubernetes cluster installation and configuration. Uh, then a network, a network creation, we are using Calico networking. Actually, this is a SDN we discussed before. Uh, then port creation, then namespace, uh, Kubernetes deployment, uh, and then Kubernetes replica sets. Uh, these are the topic uh, we are going to cover. And first, we need to install install the Kubernetes, the step by step, the process. Uh, first, uh, first I will tell you one by one the steps. Then I will show you the labs. First, we need to update the registry. Then disable the setup. Uh, then verifying the setup. Uh, then reboot the server. Then installation the doc. Uh, then we need to install the uh, Kubernetes. Uh, then we need to install the Calico. Then we need to verify all the clusters are up and running. Okay, this is the lab we are going to do. I will share my PuT session. One second. Yeah. Actually, I have two server. First one is the master node. Uh, second one is the worker node. If you're checking the IP address, IP, IP area. With this IP address, I am assigning 100 dot uh, 100. If you're checking here, IP area. This 100 dot 1. If you're checking the host name. Uh, this is master node. One is not okay. Uh, cat slash place. Actually, we are using Ubuntu 20.01. Uh, next to work node, also, we are using the same version only. Okay, we are using 20.0. Okay, for prerequisites, uh, we need a static IP address. We need a we need to assign the uh, host name. Uh, this host name should be communicated in the uh, each node. Uh, for communication purpose, we can say TC. Sorry. At slash etc slash Host, we can enter, we can add enter it here first. etc host, we can remove the IPv6 entries. Not here 192.168.100.100. Dot dot this is our master node 192.168.100.101. Dot 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 this is our node. Okay, host name. We can take this and we can put it here. We can save it and take the host name host. We think here hosts. Okay. The same entry we can paste it in the second node also. We can go into worker node. M slash etc host. Here also we can remove the APP six entries and paste it. Keeping Kubernetes the hyphen master by this being Kubernetes hyphen 
worker with me. Okay, now it's a uh, host name is Rizoli. In another node, ping open net hyphen master net hyphen. Oh, this is working fine. Okay, next step, uh, we need to disable the swap file system. Uh, now, before that, we need to update the Ubuntu repository. First, we need to update the repository. In the boss server, apt hyphen update means we can go to Y also. Okay. In both server, we have the first server, it is updated. Yeah, second server, it is updated. So starting this, I will just ping to public. Now we need to disable the swap file system uh, in the both server. Okay, first one send swap t edc first step swap of minus a. Okay, I did in the master server. The same thing I did in the worker node also. The next thing uh, we need to verify it is a vector or not. Mean we can go to PC first app. Okay, there is no sub in uh, sub information. Okay, check into the master node PC. Also, there is no sub information. Okay, then we can directly install the uh, docker uh, first we need to sudo apt install docker io we can run in the master node the same step we can follow in the worker node also we can put minus y it is updating it's 25 is in the program you can check in the worker node yeah there also it's okay it's 84 percentage and check in the worker node yeah there is also progress Once we install the Docker, then we can start the services and just enable the services. Yeah, Docker installation is complete in one side. We can put it. We can we can start the services and just enable the service. Okay, if you want to check uh, sys system CPL. Yeah, it is running. The master robot, everything is working fine. And put the worker node, worker node installation is completed. Okay. Now we can start the services and we can enable the service. Uh, it's done. Then we can check the uh, system CTL. Uh, status. Yeah, it's uh, still running. Okay. The Docker installation is completed. Then we can move into the next step. Uh, need to install the K it is required. We need to install the KL in the port server. KL is installed. 
okay then we need to add some registry value uh, this registry value we need to install actually this is for docker installation uh, this value also we need to install on the both side Well, basically this is updating the repository uh, kubernetes repository okay repository is updated we need to run this one also in the port side and it's also completed and the storage portion we need to add some more value in both server But this is also updated. So we are uh, check kernel is actually we are by default it is uh, false. We are we need to manually just make it uh, true. That's clear. But then we need to make a directory. Then we need. To start the uh, service in Poseidon. MKD, MKD air minus P ETC system D system D Docker services dot D. We need to reload that one also. This also we need to run in the post side. Then install called cube ADM, then kubelet and uh, cube CTL in on both server. Now we are going to install the Kubernetes in post server. This is the command uh, apt install kubeadm, kubelet, kubectl, uh, then kube, uh, Kubernetes CNI. I am putting max y. With this also, it, it will not take much time. It is it's very, very simple steps. I am putting in a uh, second node. It installed cube ADM, cube let cube CTL into here. Okay. Okay, installation is going on. Progressing 41 percentage. Let's see in the second node. Yeah, there is also going on. It's uh, 8 percentage. The things in okay, so maybe okay. So I think it's completed in the both side, it's getting the screen both side. In this command, we need to run in the uh, master node only, we need to. Uh, you need to run the init command kubeadm in kubeadm init. This is the command uh, sudo kubeadm init. This is running only in the master node. Kubernetes version is v on 23.5. Actually, this is taking a little bit more time. You can perform this version before using the video image pool. It's taking normally, it's taking some time.
Yeah, it's pulling some information. It's gathering some information, creating some. If you're creating here, if you think here, creating static port, uh, QB API server, it is creating the control manager, then scheduler. See here. Yeah, it's uh, installation scale. If you look into here, you can see the Kubernetes control plane has initialized successfully. Okay, to start using the cluster, you uh, to start using the cluster, you need to run the following as regular user. Okay, first we need to create a folder, then copy some file to here, then sudo permission also required. Okay, I'm creating the file and copying this that information. I'm copying here. Okay. Uh, now, oh, now what we can what we can do is we can join that. Uh, if you if anyone anyone want to join this cluster, you can use this link and join that particular cluster. Yeah, this is I need to copy this one. Okay. I'm actually wondering kubectl get not. If you're checking now, it is getting it is showing only cube cube uh, cube net for masterly, right? I'm going to work or not. I'm running this command cube adm join cube adm join then master server IP address then particular port then token IDs and all token ID with the certificate. I'm running this one. Starting the kubernet, waiting for the kubernet, uh, performing the TLS bootstrap. Okay. Uh, now it is showing the node has joined the cluster. If you run kubectl get node on the control plane to see the node join the cluster. Okay. We can go into master node. If you run it again, yeah, it's joined. See, now here kubernet master is there, then kubernet worker also there. Yeah, but the status is not ready. Uh, we need to install the network calico. We need to configure. Then only the status will coming to up. Uh, that we can do. Before that, first we need to yeah we can change. We can install the calico. Calico installation actually basically it's very simple. Uh, we have YAML file in the publicly. We need to just run with the calico. That's it. Is the file kubectl apply minus f? Uh, this is a public uh, manifest file. We can use it that one. Yeah, it's a Calico STN is created. If you check kubectl uh, get not, uh, still it's not ready, but uh, we can check the ports. It is taking some time. Uh, it's port minus minus all minus name spaces. Uh, see, it's uh, interesting only. It is taking some time. It is Q proxy the container uh, ports are running. Now Calico is interesting only. It is the pending state. This also in the pending state. This also pending state. Uh, this should come up the running. Then only the status is uh, moved to running state. You need to wait some more time. In the meantime, we can what we can do is we can just change the lab. Now it is showing none only, right? We can just change to worker or something. Changing this one, we can we can use follow kubectl get node. Uh, kubectl get node uh, minus minus show labels. Okay, it's a uh, label worker. Worker is showing none. This we can change. I'm just changing worker. Okay. 
Okay, now it's see now if you if you check into status, it is getting ready. Uh, roles also work. It's all our labeling also done. If you check in the port status, yeah, but character is still running. That's what problem. We can use W, but yeah, it's now it's almost everything is working fine. We checking the and also everything is working fine. Yeah, cube CTL get port. Cubes, uh, there is no port, right? Okay, no problem. Uh, cube CTL get port uh, minus minus all minus names places. Okay, now the Kubernetes cluster installation is completed. Now everything is working fine. Cube CTL get an order. Yeah, it is still displaying the master node is there, worker node is there, status is ready. If you want to more details, you need to put minus O minus YAML. Minus O. Sorry, minus O white. If you click in here, it's uh, it will give the, all the details. It's like a name, status, role age uh, version which version we are using internal ip address external ip address uh, os version kernel version container runtime which container we are using for this uh, clustering like that information you will get you need to run uh, this ctl get uh, node minus o wide wide option okay, actually this one i am using more Time, uh, more, more time to connect the server actually I am not like this this one I am just using I am just sharing the screen I will open my JIT, uh, JIT terminal from the JIT terminal you will get all the you will, you will get all the details in detail. Give me one second. Yeah. Uh, cube CTL, cube CTL, it's not minus or white. Uh, it's a master node is here, status is there, role is there, age is there, version is there, internal IP address, external IP address, OS image, kernel version, content runtime. These are the information you will get once you use minus O white command. Okay, hope uh, you clear this one. Then, yeah, we can go to the, our chat link. Okay, next step is we need to create a pod and installation is running. 
you can also try to install right you can also try to install but you just follow this uh jit link you can find all the commands from here don't worry about any command and all okay we can go to the port creation Uh, we get three way to create the port from the kubectl command first command is we can use kubectl run command we can use for port creation second command is we can use kubectl create command uh, while creating the command you can use cla or uh, manifest yaml file we can use uh, the third way you can use kubectl apply kubectl apply command only support the yaml file uh, port creation this is the command this is a cla command uh, for creating the port uh, you need to run port c uh, kubectl run port name then minus minus image is equal to image name yeah we'll check this one uh, let's say kubectl kubectl uh, kubectl run sorry kubectl run my port minus minus image is equal to you can use nginx image sorry change my terminal okay cube serial run minus port minus minus name is equal to nginx okay, i'm just running this command okay actually the port is created if you if you want to check this port you can use kubectl get port the container is creating we can use w for watching uh, it's still in the container creation stage oh sorry i forgot to share my screen Yeah, this is the command you, know, you can use uh, kubectl run uh, port name minus minus image nginx we can use this one yeah if you want to check this one kubectl get port we can use so check this one kubectl cube get port yeah the port is running if you want to detailed information you need to use the same command minus one while will give you all the details the port name the status uh, then restart age ip address of that particular port uh, where it is running in the which uh, which work node it is this port is running in the which work node dot uh, this kind of details you will get uh, we can use scale scale you can use this ip address yeah see the page is running this is the one way to creating the port. The second way is the manifesto file. I will share, I will share my uh, uh, JIT link. Okay, this way we all we already tried, right? Then second one is the manifesto file. We checking the manifest well we need to mention all the things like ap version kind metadata spec actually if you focus to manifest well it is mainly four portions are there first one is the ap server then kind metadata spec these are the uh, mandatory things uh, if you check the ap server it is mentioning the v1 kind is support uh, and then metadata we can specify the uh border details and then spec uh, spec we can mention the image which image we want to use image name which port we want to expose like that you can mention the spec details so if you're coming to here see ap version v1 actually this is the cube ap version kind is there mentioning port uh, then name name of the port we can mention in the metadata field then if you come into the spec it is mentioned the container uh, image name of the container which image you want to which image you want to try 
um, then all the details we need to mention then it's protocol tcp or udp this is a field okay now i think you confused about uh, what is ap version kind how it is calculating like right this is the scenario if you are using port the version should be v1 if you are using service the version should be v1 uh, if you are using a replica set then version should be api slash v1 if you are using a deployment set then the api slash v1 we need to use uh, step is very simple we need to copy paste it this uh, commands and you can use this command kubectl create minus f then manifesto file uh, which file is mentioned the configuration this is the command then if you come down this the uh, commands to get the details on all if you want to delete the port we can use kubectl delete ports and port name okay we can try this in the okay okay i'm just copying this line stop sharing i will share my put it on well okay, i'm just creating a file it's called uh, nginx nginx nginx.yaml okay, in this field i go i pasted all the details uh, ap version i mentioned uh, v1 uh, kind is port uh, metadata is name is nginx specs so i mentioned container it's a minus name nginx image we are using nginx 1.14.2 port i need to expose 80 okay i'm just going cube ctl it when and we need to mention this yaml file if you're running this yeah the port is created see the port is created if you want to check that one cube ctl get port country container is creating put up you okay the container is we can watch that one yeah now the country is created if you check the final port it's created if you want to long list the details minus or wide see the police if you want, I want to access this port you can use care the police is created okay if you want to delete that particular port you can use kubectl uh, delete port and the next port is delete if you want to delete another port you can use delete port do you think this no results found in the default namespace clear i will ask you one question actually previously we are showing so many ports right now if we are checking now it is mentioning there is no port in the default name space then where exactly that ports okay we we can look into the name space I'm just stop sharing my terminal. I will reshare my. Git, git page. Okay, now we are going to discussing about uh, namespace. Actually, namespace, uh, namespace provide the mechanism for isolating groups of resources within a single cluster namespace of resource need to be unique with the namespace but not cross namespaces okay these are the main uh, namespaces uh, these are the main default namespaces actually first one is the default one then cube proxy cube public these are the three main spaces actually if you are checking just cube ctl get pod means it is showing only the default what are the ports is running in the default uh, namespace this is only showing 
I hope you got the idea. You want to check the namespace, you need to run the kubectl get namespace. Uh, if you want to create multiple uh, namespace menu, um, namespace means you can create, you can use kubectl create namespace, then namespace name. Uh, this is the command terminal, otherwise you can use the manifesto file. Um, API, API then kind of metadata name, name of the namespace also you can mention. Okay, uh, then this is the command kubectl create uh, namespace test. Okay, um, if, you, if you're creating on port, uh, then the meantime, if you want to create a separate namespace also, this is possible. From um, if you're checking this manifesto file, this is mentioned, API version is mentioned, kind is mentioned, metadata is mentioned. Namespace, they are mentioned test space. If it is the if it is test namespace is there, uh, test namespace is there, then the this pod will create it under this uh, test namespace. Otherwise, they will create the new test space and uh, they will create the ports. So you can check this in the our lab. I hope you understand the namespace, right? Actually, this is basically it's isolating the uh, ports. No, but the namespace should be same in the same namespace across the namespace uh, the the port no, sorry the port name it is uh, unique in the inside the namespace across the namespace there is no identification is not it's not required it's uh, we can use the same namespace uh, same port name for the other namespace also okay i will my share my putty session i will check all the comments We're checking here kubectl get and use namespace or ns and short name also possible in this see we're checking here it is mentioned default one is there cube pro or cube public is there then cube system is there actually while installing time we check the lot of we saw the lot of namespaces uh, we saw the lot of ports actually that ports are that ports is automatically allocating to uh cube system if you're checking ns cube ns namespace is showing cube ctl cube ctl get port ns we can just mention the this port name Minus sorry for the cube CTL get port get cube CTL get port as in us. One second, I can check that one. Oopsie, get bored. Minus two broad release. Oopsie, till get bored. Minus minus all. Minus name spaces. Sorry. See, if you're checking here, uh, this minus minus all minus name space. Uh, it will list all the namespaces and uh, what are the ports ports are running. If we checking here, the namespaces and these are the ports are running. 
but these ports are running under this cube system namespaces. So this command is what I don't know by this one. This minus 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 in spaces. There's no problem, we'll see it later. Okay. Uh, first we can create a cube namespace, cube C till create NS test. Okay, if we check into cube C till okay this mention test is created the same thing we can use in manifesto file also so we need to create a file ns.yaml from here we need to paste all the details okay mm, ap version is v1 kind is namespace metadata minus name is equal to minus name is this is the namespace name okay i'm just saving this one cube ctl create minus f ns dot yaml cube ctl get ns my name is space is created we'll show you one more example Order.yaml. I will create one port. I'm just creating one port. Uh, the namespace is test. Just saving create cube ctl eight minus f order.yaml uh, validation is failed for the validate ap version not set oh ca is missed ap version for is creator if you check in the cube ctl return as test is creator if you check minus minus a Minus minus again use minus 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 order in the name spaces. See in here the test namespace is created. Inside the test namespace we create on port. If you see till I will show you how to delete the namespace, get tennis. Cube CTL delete NS my name is deleted. We check into NS, it's deleted. We'll try to delete NS or test also. Test also, we can try to delete. Cube name space is deleted. If you check into NS, test is deleted. Uh, minus minus a four or nine. See if you check here that port also deleted that particular namespace also deleted. Yeah, that's a taboo the namespace. I hope everyone is understand about uh, namespaces. Okay, I will share my Jit link. Okay, port creation namespace is completed. Next, we can jump into click asset. <laughs> Why do we replica in Kubernetes? 
actually this is the purpose uh, a replica set purpose is to maintain a stable set of replica ports running at any given time let's say just you think uh, you have an application server actually it's a uh, five ports are handling that particular application okay if in the peak time also if you want to maintain that 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 uh, uh, ports if you can create the replica set in that time if any port is going to crash or something the replica set will automatically deploy the automatically maintain the that particular uh, stable set this is the purpose of replica set we check just look into this peak uh, we have three board uh, we have three port is running if one port is going to crash replica set is automatically maintain the three ports or replica set is automatically create on port and keeping the uh, uh, stable set actually this is replica set actually this is the yaml file if you check this manifesto file it's mentioned you see here they are mentioned the version is different why because the kind is replica set that's why they are that's why the application uh, version is different we checking the metadata names my name is there mentioned nginx proxy label rp is equal to this one tire is equal to front end in the spec part in the replica option we need to specify in the spec portion spec is three replica sorry replica is three selector match label tire they are mentioned template uh, they are mentioned then again they are mentioned the spec and kind actually this spec is inside the main spec this is not a different spec actually this spec is mentioned inside the spec column and container information also mentioned yeah copy this one and i'll put it in the terminal i will share my terminal again Okay, Vim. Mm, let's say replica dot yaml pasting this one okay now we are creating the nginx image with the three replica sets which means every time the three replica will run if any port is going to crash or something the three replica is uh, uh, replica set should be three they maintain the three set of ports. I'm just saving this one. Cube CTL. Pet port I'm checking. There is no port. I'm creating this replica. Cube CTL. Create minus F. Replica dot yaml. And now the Kripa replica is created. If you check the replica, Cube CTL get rs actually this is a short name you can use this one we checking this one replica name is nginx proxy reserve status is three current status is three ready status is two now what's checking here it's four three ports are created okay if you check the get board see three ports are created the name is starting with nginx proxy this is the common name this name should be changed last uh, digit will change okay we can check port minus o wide or something at least all the details it is working in the uh, worker node this is ip address of this port okay for testing scenario what we can do is we can delete this particular port just note it down this uh, I, this name is 7s uh, 7sb5 and okay I'm just deleting this port. CTL delete the port. Then, sorry, delete port. This port name. This port name is 5s. Yeah? I'm just deleting. Okay. Now that particular port is deleted. If you are checking to get the uh, RS, oh, sorry, or oh, get RS, 
again they are maintaining the three replicas at three are ready state only if we checking the pod see k is there p7 is there seven we already deleted they put uh, another they install another uh, pod it's like a gspxe actually this is a replica set i hope uh, everybody's understand okay i will stop sharing this one i will share yeah this is a replica set if you want to delete the replica set uh, you can just delete uh, you can use the delete command and uh, just delete that one that's it i will show you how to delete cube ctl Taurus. this is the name right cube ctl delete cube ctl delete Taurus nginx proxy it's deleted if you check into get rs there is nothing if you check the pod it's not nothing it's already deleted so basically this is a replica set uh, okay we have one more portion is pending actually that is a uh, deployment actually that is a hot topic uh, we need to focus on uh, deployment set i will share my jit link basically this is my linkedin profile shy to stack uh, you can also follow us okay i will share my cheat okay because it is already done oh, sorry because it is done we can go with deployments First, I will tell you why why deployment is important. Kubernetes deployment. Kubernetes deployment is sit top of the Kubernetes arc, uh, architecture layer. First pod, then replica set, then deployment set. This is a structure. By using deployment, we can easily upgrade the pods instead of using rolling up. Uh, rolling update and we can easily undo the changes uh, so deployment can um, so the deployment and the kubernetes cluster is very flexible and given us more valuable you check into the this uh, diagram if you're creating the deployment set it is automatically create if you create a deployment set it is automatically create the replica set and it is automatically create the pod also this is the three layer of uh, deployment uh, then if you check in the advantages of deployment in kubernetes we can easily scale the application by creating multiple instances of a single pod that is one of the advantages then second one is upgrade the instance uh, seamlessly the deployment use the rolling update uh, concept the rolling update will update the increase in the instance on after another instead of pulling all and this is also one of the uh, update actually this is updating on after on only uh, if you update the instance had the same if if you update instance had a some error then we can easily undo the changes and roll back to the previous version actually this is also one of the advantage okay then how to deployment work uh, first it will create a deployment set just set uh, registry uh, just a registry for the port definition then replica set it is created uh, created for the port definition then desired number of ports are created using the replica sites uh, this is the flow workflow we yeah, actually two type of deployment strategies there first one is first uh, they will uh, down all the ports then uh, uh, then upgrade the ports the problem is if you down all the ports means application will not uh, the application will not available right again uh, it's uh, downtime is uh, required 
and there is uh, so many options uh, so many issues are there second one is first they will down on ports then upgrade that particular port if everything is working fine then again down that another port then upgrade the another port actually by default this is the uh, default option uh, by default option is uh, we are using this one uh, during the upgrade uh, that time uh, during the uh, during the upgradation time application is not available this uh, this is not the default strategy so this is uh, this uh, this uh, this option actually this option is uh, first they will down all the ports then up this is the second one first they will up one then and uh, uh, deploy the updated one then up the older version then deploy the uh, new version then again the down then up the new version in this case do not destroy all of them this is the default deployment this is the default deployment taking down older version and bring up the new version one by one actually if you uh, actually this is the default one actually this is will not take uh, any downtime or something actually, this is also one of the good practice I hope uh, everybody understood this concept for deployment. I'll recap one more time. Actually, your deployment is uh, on top of the Kubernetes. If you create the deployment set, uh, it's by default it is creating the replica set and the ports. One of the advantages is you uh, can easily upgrade, uh, easily upgrade to new version. If any, if, if let's say if the new version have some bug or something, we can easily undo the older version. That is also possible. That is also one of the good advantages. Then uh, upgrade to new version is very easy. There is no downtime is required. Actually, this is the manifesto file. Yeah, this is the manifesto file. Uh, the deployment object, the Kubernetes cluster in the same structure of a replica set. Uh, only the kind difference look the below code which used to create Node.js application. Mm -hmm. Okay, first check this one. API server is mentioned. API server is APS v1. Kind is we need to mention deployment. Then metadata field, okay, that is you can change at any things. Uh, container name we need to mention the image name which image we need to use uh, like that image version we need to mention we need to mention here otherwise, otherwise it will take the latest version only uh, and then replica set we need to mention here it is uh, three replica sets then selector label we can mention here okay uh, then we can check the support as a testing purpose. We can check uh, get deployment status. Uh, we can check uh, replica service. Then we can check the port status. Okay. After that, we can do one more exercise. Actually, we are now we are using for creating nginx 1.8 16.1. After the deployment, we can what we can do is we can just uh, upgrade the uh, nginx version and uh, see it how it is working and all. Okay, I will show staring my jit. I will share my booty session. Okay, I'm clearing my screen. I'm just opening deployment.yaml. I'm just copy paste the configuration file from the jit. I'm just copy paste the configuration file okay here we are mentioned a p version is uh, v1 then kind is deployment set uh, then friend uh, replica set uh, replica set we are maintaining the three okay i'm just saving this one i'm just creating the deployment set uh, qct will create minus l deployment okay deployment uh, deployment set is created and we can check qctl get deploy uh see uh, 
uh, deployment is created. RS. Uh, desired is three, current is three, ready is it's uh, on the process. If you check, uh, get on. Yes, so now it's running. If you're checking RS, okay, now it's uh, ready is three. If you check, uh, deploy, yeah, it's three out of three. Uh, we can do one, uh, one thing QCTL delete the pod. Uh, this R R T two is I'm deleting deleted. But if you check the deployment, it's still in, still three point three. Why? Because we are configure the replica set. We can, uh, replica set will maintain the desired set of replica. You checking the port get port C B V and W R is there. They created the new replica. Set. Now the replica set is working fine. We just want to know QCTL to deploy. Then we can check QCTL. Describe deploy and deployment name. Describe spelling. Yes. If you're describing that particular deployment set, it is mentioning all the details. You will get all the details. Name is they are mentioning node app deployment, uh, namespace is by default, and then current creations, creator timestamp is mentioned. Then image name they are mentioned. Image name it's nginx. Its version is one point sixteen point one. These are the things they are mentioned. Okay, uh, what we can do is we can just you know the current version is see 1.16.1. So we want to upgrade this to latest version. For upgrading this one, we can just use a single command. Kubectl get deployment. Okay, I'm just using this command. kubectl set image deployment then deployment name node.js app erp is equal to nginx this is the version we need to upgrade see if it is checking here the image is updated previous version is 1.16 now we are updated to 1.19 I'm checking the describe. See, now it is 1.19.1. If you're checking the pod, now all ports are running. There is no issue with the ports and all. Actually, this is very easy step. Okay, next one we can just uh if after the upgradation okay we find out okay uh this port have some this new port port have some issues and all we want to just uh, uh roll back to previous version actually that this command is very simple we need to use kubectl rollout undo deployment and then deployment name Rollback is completed. If you check in the pod, it is see its container is deleted and they're recreating the another one. Terminating the latest one and they just and now it's all ports are working fine. I'm just taking the version, just describing. See now it is rollback to 1.16.1. If you're checking the logs, it is mentioned the scaled up is done, scaled down is done, like that. The same way you can deploy your application, you can scale up your application, you can scale down the application and all. Okay, 
will share my chat. Yeah, this is the manifest well you can also follow this command command line also is possible you can follow this one and you can test it in your own labs and all i think i almost clear all the portions Actually, this is my LinkedIn profile. You just uh, follow us uh, for getting the more updates, for more technical information. If you have any query or something, you can just ask me through LinkedIn. Uh, we have one LinkedIn mail. Actually, that is, it's, uh, we have an uh, email address. Actually, it's info at redcloudunload.com. You can, if you have any query on regarding this topic or related to this topic, you can just feel free, free, free to email us. One of the technical guru will guide you for your uh, clarifying the doubts and orders. I'm just wind up in the session. Thank you all. Once again, thank you all. Thank you for joining the session. Goodbye.